Etiquette An inquirer asked Syed Khida Rumi, Is there anything which can be called the best and also the worst of human institutions? He said, Yes, indeed, there is such a thing, and its name is etiquette. The advantage of etiquette and conduct is that it enables the wise to approach the student without being jeered at, and it makes possible the search by the student without people thinking him ridiculous. The disadvantage of etiquette, which makes it the worst of human institutions, is that it enables the ignorant to erect their own rules of what is permissible in thought and conduct and what is not. If such people decide that there are certain things which should never be thought or done, then they can effectively prevent the transmission of knowledge. The inquirer asked, May I have an instance of how this happens in our teaching? Syed Khida Rumi said, It has become customary for people, when they read prescribed books and accounts of the doings of the masters, to say, This is an analogy which does not apply to me. It also enables them to say, This is an encounter with a stupid man. I could never think like the man in the tale. Therefore the teacher is in this instance dealing with a completely different type of person. The reality is that such a person is always the one most in need of teaching, while he is unaware of it. There is a story of the dog who was distressed when a man shouted at him, saying, Look at that mangy creature! The dog, instead of looking for a sage who would cure his mange, jumped into a pool of water and came out dripping wet. He ran up to the man, wagging his tail, as if to say, Look, my coat is changed. It is all dampness where before it was a dusty mat. The man started to curse him even more strongly, because he did not want the dog to shake the water off all over him. The dog became convinced that the man was irrational, while it was simply a matter that the one did not understand the other. In the instance of the acts related of the wise, the doggishness in the student must realise that the sage is talking about a real, not an illusory, improvement in his state. Reactions A certain philosopher said to a Sufi sage, you must always deal with a farmer, say, or a soldier, or a merchant differently. The Sufi disagreed, saying, People behave in the same way if you approach them in the same way. The Sufi sent the rich man to live in a hovel, and a farmer to visit a friend of his who lived in a palace, and a soldier to associate with the friends of a rich merchant. They all became depressed in their new surroundings, and all sent him messages, saying, We wanted to study under you, and we find ourselves depressed and making no progress in our studies. Now the Sufi showed the philosopher these letters, and remarked, I can find no difference in the behaviour of these three men, all different and all in different surroundings. He sent a message to the three, in which he said, I wanted to test your resolution whether you would flourish if you were placed somewhere which you did not expect. All three of them met later at the home of the Sufi, and agreed among themselves that the Sufi, having failed to influence them in some manner, was now trying to explain his conduct in a manner which would impress them. The philosopher, invited to see the Sufi, after examining the three men, said, I admit they have all shown the same kind of behaviour, but in presenting this demonstration to me, you have violated your own principles of teaching, for you have preferred victory in debate to what you people call real teaching. You have caused these three men to distrust all Sufis, and hence place them outside the realm of your teaching. The Sufi said, On the contrary, it is you who have failed to observe that I chose, in the first place, Candidates who would not in any case have been accessible to higher understanding. There cannot therefore have been any waste of potentiality. The philosopher, however, persisted. If you have been working with people who have no prospects, you have undoubtedly violated another principle of the people of your school. This, I must remind you, is your contention that everything that a Sufi does is significantly connected with the higher aim. The Sufi said... 
you are again wrong, because you choose your own interpretations, preferring to ignore the operation of the teaching. I shall have to explain. The demonstration, providing that its lessons are learnt, will enable others to learn and to avoid similar mistakes. This is an essential part of the higher aim. Words are useless by themselves. What the words can do is the very reverse of useless. Motivation A woman was sitting by the roadside, weeping most bitterly at the grave of her daughter. She was the object of sympathy and concern to everyone who saw her. Yet Sheikh Attar observes that those who sympathised with her were themselves in a worse case. The woman, as a wayfarer points out, unlike a thousand other people around, at least knew the cause of her grief and the object from which she had been separated. Man is in a similar condition of estrangement, as it were from his family, but does not know it. All he knows is that he is unhappy, and he has to invent reasons to which he then attributes his misery. Three Interpretations Three dervishes who had resolved to find truth arrived at the home of one of the great teachers, reputedly Mir Alishanawai. They asked him to help them, and for answer he took them into his garden. Picking up a stick of dead wood, he walked from one bed of flowers to another, striking off the blooms of the tallest of the plants. When they returned to the house, the sage seated himself among his students and asked, What was the meaning of my actions? Whichever of you can interpret them aright will be accepted for the teaching. The first dervish said, My interpretation of the lesson is, People who imagine that they know more than others may have to suffer a levelling in the teaching. The second dervish said, My understanding of the actions is, Things which are beautiful in appearance may be unimportant in the totality. The third dervish said, I would describe what you did as indicating a dead thing, even a stick of repetitious knowledge, can still harm what is alive. The master said, You are all enrolled, for between you meanings are shared. Not one of you knows all. What all of you have is not complete, but what each of you says is correct. Farmyard A certain teacher of the highest rank was also a farmer. He had written many books and lectures. One day a man who had read them all, and imagined himself to be a seeker, called to discuss higher matters with him. I have read all your books, said the visitor, and I agree with some and not with others. In some, again, I agree with some parts and do not understand other parts. Some books I like better than others. The farmer sage took his guest into the farmyard, where the animals and fodder were abundant. Then he said, I am a farmer, a producer of food. Do you see those carrots and those apples? Some people like the one, others the other. Do you see the animals? Some people have seen them all, but have their preferences for riding, for breeding, and for food. Some like hens, others like goats. The common denominator is not liking or disliking. The common factor is nutrition. It is all food. Streaky Sand there was once a woman who abandoned the religion in which she had been brought up. She left the ranks of the atheists, too, and joined another faith. Then she became convinced of the truth of yet another. Each time she changed her beliefs, she imagined that she had gained something, but not quite enough. Each time she entered a new fold, she was welcomed, and her recruitment was regarded as a good thing and a sign of her sanity and enlightenment. Her inward state, however, was one of confusion. At length she heard of a certain celebrated teacher, traditionally Imam Jafar Sadiq, 
and she went to see him. After he had listened to her protestations and ideas, he said, Return to your home. I shall send you my decision in a message. Soon afterwards, the woman found a disciple of the sheikh at the door. In his hand was a packet from his master. She opened it and saw that it contained a glass bottle, half full with three layers of packed sand, black, red and white, held down by a wad of cotton. On the outside was written, Remove the cotton and shake the bottle to see what you are like. She took the wadding out and shook the sand in the bottle. The different coloured grains of sand mixed together, and all that she was left with was a mass of greyish sand. To Seek to Learn to Seek Reis El Saluk taught his disciples, I have only one lesson. When you have learnt this, you will be able to learn another. I searched everywhere for spirituality until I understood that it was not to be found in any of the places where the unworthy seek it. My master, Hakim Anis, taught me that I must learn how to be worthy to seek. Seeking without worthiness is arrogance concealed. I asked the Hakim where I should go to find knowledge and not opinion. Then he taught me what I did not want to learn, in a way I did not want. He taught me how to seek knowledge.